I am Dean and Director for Non-Engineering Programs at Silver Oak University. Hi, Yeah, hi. So, I am Professor Hitesh Bhatia. I am the Associate Dean for School of Business and Law at Navarish University, Baroda. Welcome, sir. Welcome, Professor. Sir. Thank you. Yeah, so, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before Molly takes over, I thought we'll just give you a small, uh, uh, you know, idea of what we want to do, basically. Uh, the whole thing is that, you know... Uh, good evening to all of you, and uh, welcome to this... Uh, design thinking session on the topic of uh, reimagining higher education for the digital era. This is a topic we have been discussing since morning. We have listened to so many experts through panel discussions and working through the lectures, but we are now going to put our minds together as a team. Uh, uh, my name is, as I, as I was introduced, my name is uh, Chandra Mauli Shuran Gopal Krishnan. It's a 32 characters long tongue twister. I will make it easy for you. Education is all about making things easy. So you can call me Mauli, like Bruce Lee, Jet Lee, Mauli. Easy to remember, okay. right? So keep it, let's keep it that way. The second thing is uh, design thinking is something that uh, we, uh, uh, it's a serious thing, but has to be done in a fun way. So that, that's the way, that's a, that's a kind of you know, contradiction that it brings. So the first request I have for all of you is that uh, we all are uh, you know, experienced for many years, we are all highly educated, many of you would be pro doctorates, uh, PhD doctorates, etc. And uh, even I am an MBA. So let's forget all our identities and become school kids. For the next one and a half hours, we are school kids. So that's the reason I am also keeping my device off. I would request all of you to put your device on silent mode and keep it off. And we have kept a lot of stationery on all your uh, uh, Table. uh, tables. And uh, that is going to be the only uh, set of tools we will be using for the next one and a half hours. So it's, it's going to be fun. And, and I'm sure you will go back with uh, great memories and great learning uh, from all, all the people here. Uh, first, a few questions. Uh, we have three tables or three teams. Uh, just for the sake of uh, uniformity, I see one team with only three people, but here one team with five people. Can one of you probably, if you don't mind, shift to that team so that there's some some balance in all the teams? That will be really helpful. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Sony. Probably if you can also take your uh, name card. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sony. Yeah, that that helps. And uh, I also second thing I wanted to verify is uh, in any of the tables, uh, any of you already know each other, uh, you know, friends, colleagues. So that's important because you are here. We are supposed to, you know, uh, make uh, uh, new friends and new colleagues, and you know, come up with, uh, you know, come get on a discussion with strangers, so to say, and eventually become uh, new new uh, friends. So that that's the way it is. And uh, when the question was asked, how many of you have gone through a design thinking exercise? I just saw two people uh, raising their hand. Of course, the intent of this session is not to teach you design thinking. That's a topic by itself. That's a separate thing by itself. We are not planning to do that. What we are planning to do is to only approach the entire thing uh, the, of this topic of uh, reimagining higher education for uh, digital era using the design thinking methodology that's all so don't don't uh, oh, no, we are not here to teach you design thinking we can always do it later when if at all some of you are interested in your campuses that's something we can do later and uh, all of you i'm sure uh, have been going through a very content heavy sessions uh, set of content heavy sessions since morning and uh, we also have had our uh, uh, lunch uh, just uh, some a while ago. So it's important for design thinking we get our uh, physic and mind uh, at, at its best. So we are going to do a small uh, warm up exercise. So if I may request all of you to stand up for a few minutes and uh, I will also request my uh, fellow colleague uh, Pradeep to come over here. Uh, Madam, uh, for your sake, uh, if you are able to do some of the things fine, we are going to do certain activities whichever we are comfortable. right? So we are going to go through a certain uh, warm-up. And uh, for that, what I request is, uh, in the respective tables, two people pair against each other with a certain distance between you and not very close to any of the desks or chairs. Just face each other like this and stand with a certain distance and not having anything, a little at least away uh, from all the chairs on this one. Now, uh, just to ensure that you are, you are not getting hit. Yeah, you can hit it. Right? So now, uh, we are going to go through uh, four rounds of a certain warm-up and what I would request is initially don't do it, just observe what we are doing, get the thread of it and then uh, when, I, when we say do it, you start doing it, right? So the first round goes like this, I, I am there, Pradeep, <laughs> Pradeep is there, uh, no, 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 just fights are done, don't worry, it's a simple thing. So I will start saying one, then he will say two, then I will say three, then he will switch back to one, okay? One, two, three, one, two. 
One, two, three, one, two. Do it fast. Oh, you can now start right. Try doing one, that. Everybody at once. See. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. With your pair. Yeah. One, two, three, three, two, one, 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 three, any anybody from go for wrong without uh, i mean go for wrong without a, a mistake and break uh, only three digits 1 2 3 were only coming so, up no, 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 no that's okay but it tells me the right sequence right that's yeah, why yeah, people are the result yeah now let's get on with the second round the second round is just a small very small variation of the first round okay let's get on with the second round the second round is just a small variation of the first round where uh, one will be substituted with the clap and two or three you'll have to tell it out right so that is what it is so just observe what we are doing okay sharing debating discussing and coming up with ideas so that is what uh, we just did a warm up now uh, uh, before we get to anything firstly i i should have told it right at the beginning i am truly uh, humbled and uh, privileged to be you know managing the session with all of you i see about 12 of you having gathered here and uh, even as being an average experience of about 20 years we are talking about uh, 240% years of uh, experience in academic world uh, sitting here this is not a easy easy thing to uh, gather and uh, thanks to uh, adorcom for making all of you you know assemble here and uh, so that's where we thought instead of we just giving lectures we actually put you all together make you debate and come up with newer ideas and newer solutions for the topic we have so for the benefit of everybody i'll just give you a brief glimpse of uh, design thinking before we actually get into the activity itself uh if i were to put it very simply design thinking is a empathy based solutioning of a problem or solving of a problem that's all what i mean by empathy is 
the real person or the persona who is impacted from their perspective we solve the problem that is what it is i will demonstrate it with a small example there is this company by name ido i d e o you can note it down you can go and search for it later in youtube there is a lot of things that we use today taking for granted have been designed by them globally the computer monitors the mouse that you use the computers the shopping cart you uh, push through in the in the uh, retail outlets most of the items we use on a daily basis they have been uh, designed by them and this is a real story i'm telling and they are the ones who actually came up with this concept of design thinking originally then it has become a global concept now now uh, the story goes like this uh, once uh, this famous uh oral healthcare company called oral b who manufacture toothbrushes they approached them and they said that uh, boss our toothbrush market is getting too crowded i mean every brush is a sense of customers don't have any loyalty or they don't know specifically ask for oral b they whatever comes to their hand they take it and go i want to create a niche for myself i want to introduce something called kids brushes so that they you know i i attract the kids with those brushes and kids will insist with their parents that i only want a oral b toothbrush and that way i will get extra market share so these people said yeah brilliant idea so what do you want us to do so they said you just need to design a toothbrush for kids and uh, idea people said okay fine no problem we'll do it but give us about a week to 10 days time we need to go in the field and observe kids and interact with kids and then only we will come back with the design beginning itself and the uh, oral b management team laughed at them saying that uh, what is the big deal here uh, why are you want to go to the field look at the kids and all that you want to make money from here what uh, by the end of the day a human hand adults hand is big and the children's hand are uh, small so whatever is the proportion of adult toothbrush that has to be proportionately reduced and just put some colors cartoons etc that becomes a kids brush so what's a big deal about going to the field and doing some study and all that kind of stuff but idio people said no they insisted they said no we insist we will do a field study and then only start designing the toothbrush and when they actually started interacting with kids they started observing kids etc etc one big revelation happened the revelation is as follows i want to volunteer sir would you like to volunteer can you show to the team how would you hold your toothbrush when you brush them morning or night or whatever so if it is brush mm. the brushes are here sure, yeah i i hold like this so yeah. you hold it like this and brush yeah that's what it does fantastic thank you sir thanks for volunteering now anybody having small kids at home or anybody can recollect your own kids growing up would you remember how they used to hold the toothbrush can one of you volunteer and show me show it to the team now somewhere at the start of the they will which means they don't hold in the fist so a toothbrush for an adult will have a certain stem size but on a same proportion of the hand being smaller for it if i reduce the stem size the kids clasping will not be good enough and they will start you no know, uh, uh, whatever getting bleeding and all that because of some injuries etc they can develop injuries so in the course of this one so actually for a kids to brush the stem has to be larger than the adult to brush and that regulation happened and this is what is design thinking it made it very easy for you to understand with the real life case right? so that is what is design thinking so it's basically a empathy based uh, problem solving where we validate three things one is it desirable is it desirable for the kid whatever brush i'm giving so that is the first thing second is is it feasible is it technically feasible to come up with a solution like that i may come up with a solution like you know i will give you a instead of a toothbrush i will give you a liquid uh, brush every day just put it on so uh, you know use it like a bubble gum is it feasible will the parents spend every day one bubble gum on on the kid and is it financially viable is it too expensive a thing because nowadays i don't know how many of you have seen those ads if you go to youtube and watch i do these in the my free time just for fun there are smart commodes that have come which cost in upward of 2 lakhs when you go near the commode the seat opens and you sit and you finish your work and there is a water that comes and the you know, tube comes out and there is a hot air that comes and dries your bum and all kinds of stuff and pull up for those and night time there is a light that comes <laughs> you know, technology is going somewhere so so 
that that's the way it is. So it should be technically uh, feasible and also financially viable, and it should be desirable for the end user. So that's these are the three things we will do in the uh, design thinking. The grammatical design thinking is a very uh, very uh, long exercise. It uh, minimum runs for a day, and uh, ideally it runs for uh, several days together, or it breaks even you know some weeks for for a certain given uh, problem. Obviously, we don't have that kind of um, uh, liberty here, so we have limited time, so we have to divide up in another about one, one and about hours. So given that time constraint, what we are going to do is we are going to do something like a rapid design thinking. This is my own modification of the grammatical design thinking methodology, just to suit this time constraint. At the same time, keeping the essence of the design thinking as it is, right? So that's the way we are going to go. Now the first uh, thing, so <coughs> and another important thing is in the case of design thinking, the most important uh, phase of the design thinking is something called ideation, where you need to come up with ideas for, as solutions for the problems that we are discussing. And uh, in that, think out of the box. That's very important. Don't worry about whether it is right or wrong. Am I going to look silly in front of my own uh, people when I say something like this? Don't have any inhibitions. Come up with all the crazy ideas that come to your mind. And many great things have happened only with the uh, crazy ideas. So, uh, we will come to that also. So that is the most important thing. So have an open mind, no inhibitions, no holds barred. Just just express yourself in the next one and a half hours. Now we are going to the first activity. Uh, uh, or Philip, can you just uh, put a timer in your this? But when I say start it, one minute timer. When I say you start it, uh, firstly in every uh, uh, every uh, table we have uh, four people. And uh, this is the team uh, going to be not a problem, but I want you guys to don't do. Mostly they said uh, 20 people, so I put that way. I want you. I want to give you all of you one minute, and I hope all of you see those uh, uh, post-its and also the sketch pens kept in your uh, this one. So my request to you is uh, now take out only two post-its and uh, one sketch pen. Any one person in the team can do that. One post, uh, two post-its, and one. Uh, Rather three post-its, three post-its and one sketch pen alone. One person can take for the time being. I'm going to give you one minute. You can discuss among yourself and you need to first give a name to your team. Now you are a team. Each one is a team. You are going to compete against each other. So you need to give a name to your uh, team. That is the first thing. Second is you need to give a nice tagline. Nice tagline. And get funny. Don't get very serious, you know, Dronacharya uh, and all that. Just get funny. Uh, like, you know, gangs of WhatsApp. Food. And uh, the tagline and we are changing something. Just, just get funny, get uh, wild, right? And uh, elect one among the four of you as the captain for this uh, team for the balance of the session. These are the three things: name, tagline, captain selection. And one post-it. In one post-it, write the name. In second post-it, write the tagline. And third post-it, write the captain. That's all that you need to do. So if need be, people can get a little closer because you have to discuss among yourself. So whichever way you are comfortable. You have to write only, or, one, only one, not each one of them. Not each one of them. This is, as I told you, any one person, three post-its and one sketch pen, that is good enough for, the, for this round. So I hope all of you are clear. One post-it, you write the name what you finalize. One post-it, you write the tagline what you finalize. And one post-it, you write the captain name you finalize. One minute has already started, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please, please keep going. Please keep going. And it will be time box. One minute means one minute. You have to stop. Okay. You can take inspiration from Bollywood, Hollywood, IPL, anything, whichever you want. So we need to go as per that. So I hope all of you could finish your name, tagline, and uh, this one. 
So what I now request is any one person from the team if you can walk up to this uh, your respective uh, this one, put that uh, to spell it out for the other people. What's the name? What's the tagline? Who is the captain? Maybe you can we can start. With. No, you, for you it is that sir. For you it is that. Uh, yeah, we have kept the uh, different uh, Yeah, you can start. So he is starting. Please have your attention for him. Let's listen what name they have designed. Let's listen what name they have designed. Oh, he has not put it in the post it. Okay, fine. No issues. Ye laga na. Ah, just paste the post it, sir. That's enough. Just paste the post it. That's the reason we are doing. Just paste the post it and okay. tell it. Sorry, out. sorry, sorry. No problem. Okay. Name is uh, Lord of Last Benches. Lord of Last Benches. Wow, that is cool. That is cool. Yeah, I'm first. Tag tagline is uh, Think Differently. Think Differently, okay. And captain is myself, Dr. Hooker. Fantastic, sir. Welcome, welcome. Great show, great show. I love it, I love it. Lots of Last Benches. Would this team want to go next? You can just paste the post it, sir. That's all. Yeah, please listen in, please listen in. Crazy Gang. Crazy Gang. Crazy Gang is the name, okay. Tagline? Tagline is Sarva Vyapi. Sarva Vyapi, okay. Okay, you are there everywhere. Mm. Come here, she's the captain. Okay, I'll just keep it this way, sir, because we are going to use this for many more things. So, for the timing, I'll keep it all in one small corner. Great, thank you. Madam, can you spell it out for the rest of the team so that they also get inspired? Our, uh, the name of our team is Crazy Quads. Crazy Quads, okay, four people, okay, fine, fine, great. Yeah, they yeah. are getting too engineering and technical. Yeah. <laughs> we are creative learners. Oh, wow, creative learners. And, and I am the leader. Oh, great, madam, welcome, welcome. Great, great show. Great show. So, we have uh, uh, lots of backbenchers and uh, Crazy Gang and Crazy Quads. Okay, great. So we have three teams now. Now we will move on to the next step. Now what I am going to do is, it's only three teams now, so I am going to give our main uh, team is, how do we reimagine higher education for digital era? That is our theme. We have broken it into many sub-problem -pro statements. So I am going to, all this normally happens by you in the real DT, but uh, again, possibly up time, so we have done this uh, homework and initial work. But we will start from a certain point where you will start doing. So for our team one, the problem statement is, how might we effectively prepare students for the demands of digital economy, including emerging roles and technology advancements? One of you can write it in the post-it and post it there so that you know that that's your problem statement. Okay, that is for team one. For team two, the problem statement is, how might we continually align academic, academia to dynamic industry needs for of course because this morning also it got discussed somebody specifically raised a point one professor said was every second uh, every year uh, technology changes to your this changes so how do i keep up my curriculum etc so that that's the same point we are taking up for discussion so how might we can so one of you can write it in a post-it and put it here so that that is for team two now for team three the problem statement is how might we swiftly embrace and institutionalize new education policy? Because that's a, now a big thing. Because that, that's going to be a differentiator for you as campuses to you know, uh, differentiate yourself from the rest of your competition. So how might we swiftly uh, embrace new education policy and institutionalize the same? So that is your problem statement. You can write it in a post-it and keep it there. So that uh, now at the fourth statement, anyway, I kept it. Just thinking that there will be four things. But anyway, this we will not take it up. We will just. Take the first three ones. Yeah. Are we good? Are we clear about the problem statement? Any questions on the problem statement itself? Right. It goes on our paper. Yeah, this goes on your paper. Yeah, that, that's your work area, so that goes on your paper. Right. Now what I'm going to do is now onwards actually your uh, team work starts. Till now we have done your done some homework for all of you. From, from this point, your actual teamwork uh, starts. So this is the second phase in uh, so the first phase is definition of uh, you can paste it there. So uh, the uh, first, phase, first phase in the design thinking is what is definition of the problem statement itself. So that's what we have done. Now we are going to the second phase of the design thinking, which is synthesis, synthesizing this problem mm -hmm. statement. So synthesizing the problem st statement actually happens through a lot of research. You need to research on the topic through primary research, secondary research, etc. And then uh, discuss some, you also do certain interviews also with uh, subject matter experts, etc. It's a long process by itself. And then discuss among yourself the findings and then arrive at the revised problem statement. The reason about the good thing about design thinking is it doesn't believe that the problem identified is the real problem. 
it actually tries to verify the problem itself. Are we solving the right problem? Instead of going a long distance and then finding that, oh man, I was solving the wrong problem all these way. First itself, you take a pause, verify if the problem is junior or is, does it need to be written. So that's what is the purpose of the synthesis case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all uh, uh, six minutes, right? And the expectation is very simple. Now you have put your main problem statement there. Now you need to come up with three postings below, but I'll tell you how to approach that also. The way you need to do it is, firstly, uh, I'll break this six minutes into three one minute, three two minute uh, buckets. And those, each two minute bucket will be broken into one minute and one minute. In the first one minute, everybody should do an independent brainstorming. How would I break this problem into three more specific problems? Like for example, somebody may say that, I will approach it from the perspective of content, uh, pedagogy and uh, assessments. That could be a framework in which I will, uh, I will, I will uh, look at it. So my main problem is how do I continually keep uh, 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 aligned to the industry need. I will say uh, break the problem into how can I up keep updating my content, how can I keep updating my uh, pedagogy, how can I keep updating my uh, uh, this one. Uh, so for example, today your pedagogy may be more theory oriented, but the new thing may be more required to be practice oriented. So your pedagogy has to be revised. That could be how might I uh, differentiate in terms of assessments. Probably this doesn't need a detailed uh, essay type for examination. It needs some multiple choice questions. So these are, these are, this is one dimension. Other could be process. Can I actually do something like a pre-assessment and then uh, only teach people what is delta required where they are lagging and then do a post-assessment. So it could be a process oriented approach. So that's up to you to decide. First one minute, each of you have to independently uh, brainstorm and break it into three problems. For, and uh, then the second one minute, you'll have to discuss among yourself and finally select which are the three problems you want to solve. I hope it's clear, right? Now, the first one minute is going to start now. Independent, don't discuss among yourself. You, you know your problem statement. Just break it into three specific problems as you would visualize it. More specific problems, right? Time has already started. For the benefit of everybody, I'm just putting the statements here so that if any of you want to see. So each one should have three postage by the end of this one minute. That's all. That's the idea. Yeah, by the end of one minute. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Sir, we got started, but you can join one of the groups and they will guide you on how we are. So break it into three specific problems the way you should. Whenever it comes to 10, let me know. Yeah. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pens down. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope now all of you have got your three sub-problems for the main problem. I hope all of you have got it, right? Now, while I may look very very, very strict with my times. I am also once in a while lenient. So now I am going to give you two minutes for the next time. So two minutes, discuss among yourself. Each one can tell how they visualize the three problems, uh, three sub-problems. And you need to together agree on final three. Final three. And each of those sub-problems should go into one post-it. So basically, in, in, the, in, the, in the main problem that you have put in, below that you need to put down three post -its. that's all it is. For that, you have now two minutes. You need to discuss among yourselves and shortlist those three questions, sub-questions. Time has already started two minutes.
One more minute, just one more minute. Twenty seconds more. If you are already done with your three short list, write each one of them in one post-it and keep it ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, ladies and gentlemen. Pens down. I hope you could complete three or uh, identify three problems, three sub problems for your main problem. Right? Each of those in one one post it. One problem in one post it. Just keep three post its and put it there. Right now, no need to tell it. Just put it there below that thing. Like how you see here. If you can also, I mean, I'll give you support that. Just write it in three post its and put it be, be, you know, below your main problem statement. And again, I'm repeating, I'm not going with a grammatical design thinking, I'm taking a rapid design thinking approach just in the interest of time. So, if you verify it back with the original design thinking, there's a lot of deviation in the methodology, but essence is kept. Don't worry. Yeah, you can write it briefly in a manner that somebody can write. That's all. Team 1 done, not as a team 2 done, team 3, okay, that's great, let us finish. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are done with the three sub questions in one one, this one just put it with, uh, just below your main thing. Sorry. Just paste it below like this. Great. Team two have done it. Close. Team one, have you also done? Oh, that's okay, but I mean, for the timing, you can paste it. That's a bit of a Team 3, if you can little expert, it's all fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is the time they are finishing? For the benefit of those who probably joined a little late, let me quickly tell you the background of what's happening here. Uh, we are going through a process called uh, design thinking, which is basically an empathy based uh, problem solving. Uh, the topic we are trying to solve today, the larger topic that we are solve, trying to solve today is uh, how do we reimagine higher education in the digital era. We have been running it the same way even today. So, how do we reimagine according to the changes that are happening in the digital era? And uh, what we have done is we have made all the participants into three teams. So, you have joined one of those teams. And uh, what we have, first up, what we have done is we have given each one, each team us that global topic of how do we reimagine higher education uh, in the digital era. We broke it into three specific problems and gave it to the three teams. So the first team is uh, debating on how might we effectively prepare students. Our team is first. Oh, sorry, your team. Yeah, first team. That is the one. Second team is doing about how do we. Align to the academia to it changing highly, you know, dynamically changing uh, industry needs. And the third team is solving for uh, how do we swiftly embrace and institutionalize new education policy. This is what is the three specific problems each team is uh, doing. We believe that these problems directly or indirectly relate to the larger problem of uh, reimagining the higher education system. 
No, as a first step, what they have done is they have done something called synthesis where they have broken this large level main problem into three sub specific problems. That's all we have gone, come to, right? This is just to bring some of you who came late up to speed. I hope all of you are still with us. You are clear about what's happening. Now we are going to go to the next step, which is ideation. Uh, how many of you here believe that uh, creativity is something like a God's gift? It's, it's, it's something one has to be born with and cannot be cultivated in somebody. How many of you believe that? Very true. Very true. Okay. Fine, sir. Uh, for so those of you who raised your hand, I have a... Uh, sorry. It may also happen accidentally. It may also happen. No, I'm not talking about creativity in the sense of air and one composing music or somebody paint, doing a painting, etc. Because of doing a painting and everything. Creative thinking. You come across a problem, you find a solution that they call the Indian Juga. <laughs> See, I, I'm sure you all would have seen all those kind of things, many uh, WhatsApp forwards, where one guy, there's a, we have these door stoppers, you know, there's one L shaped thing that was not available in one of the villages. So what he did was he took one old bisleri bottle, one liter bottle, filled water in it, and uh, hung it that way. So every time he pushes that one liter bottle, water will give a lot of resistance, it will come out, and then it will push it back. <laughs> so that's Indian Juga. So that's what I mean by creativity. So creativity is all about. With the available resources, finding a solution for the problem in hand. That's why I, I, I. My proposal is, you know, uh, let us not accept that it is a, you know, God gift or, you know, by birth, you know, uh, okay. characters. I will. Uh, for me, it's a myth. Uh, sorry, madam, you have a point of view on that? Yes, it can be harnessed. Yeah, exactly. So that's what uh, my point of view also. It is something that we, we can inculcate in people with, uh, you know, specific uh, uh, education. And uh, that's where uh, I am actually going to share with you. There are many frameworks on how to do creative thinking, but I'm just going to share with you one technique that I regularly use in my day-to-day -day life. I'm sure some of you might have already uh, heard about it, but uh, otherwise it will be a good learning for some of you as well, right? So the thing goes like this, it's the acronym is called CREATES, C-R-E-A-T-E-S. CREATES is the acronym for this uh, technique of creative thinking. I will explain how this works. The C is actually combined. Okay, <coughs> now all of us are talking about an academic problem, right? And who is the main character in this academic problem? Whose problem are we trying to solve? Student. And what do students hate the most? Studies. Learning. Studies is also exams. okay, sir. Exams. exams. Exactly. Hate the most. Study they may hate more, but most is exams, right? So, on the other hand, what do students love to do? Gaming, gaming, gaming sports, etc. Right? Activities. Yeah. Fun activities and you know, sports and all that. So on the one hand, they hate exams. On the other hand, they love sports or games or anything. Now, can I combine these two and gamify exams? Can that make them love exams? That is combining as a technique. That is the first technique in the creates. The second technique is Rearrange or reverse. I'll tell you the same thing. Let's take the same example of exams. Today, what are we doing? We are making a student write an exam for the entire uh, wrapper to wrapper of a book. Some hundreds of pages they have to somehow read it, and uh, the questions can come from any part of the book. And that's what makes them feel stressful. So, can I do something? Maybe even before I start teaching the exam, can I do some kind of a pre exam? to assess what all topics within that particular subject they already know well and only teach them those subjects what they probably need more polishing and restrict the exam, post exam only to those topics where they probably need a polishing. So that, that we bring down the gravity of the exam. So the stress level comes from they start loving the exam. Right? So that is the second technique which is rearrange or reverse. Third is exaggerate. Whenever I talk, they talk about this technique to the students, no, the thing they like the most is this exaggerate. But unfortunately, you, you're not going to like it <laughs> because it directly impacts you. Exaggeration is something like this. Can I, for a minute, say that, okay, students are writing exam based on what, have, what the professors have taught them, right? So, their performance in the exam is a direct reflection of how well they have been taught. So instead of the students writing the exam, can the students set the question paper and the professor writes the exam and if the <coughs> professor passes, all the students pass. Exaggeration. 
See, that's why I say don't look for practical, feasible solutions. You start there, but if you keep discussing on it and refine and refine and refine, it will get to a certain point. I'll give you a ex clear example of this. I talked about a student actually testing a professor. It ha happens in corporate world. I'm not sure if you all know it. There's something called reverse appraisal. My juniors, my reporters will appraise me. So the, it has happened because of one such discussion only. So that's what I'm saying. No idea is a bad idea. Be very, very open in your thinking. No, be very, very open in your expression. And more and more we discuss, even a seemingly impossible idea becomes a feasible idea. So that, that's, a, that's a whole essence of this design thinking. So that's a, a third thing, which is exaggerate as a technique. Next is adapt. What I'm uh, recalling is, uh, you know, uh, one of my guru who was director in Mumbai, who was you know, giving an example that, uh, yeah, somewhere, I uh -huh. do not know exactly. Uh -huh. The students had given uh, textbooks to them, and they're supposed to prepare a question. Very true. And that is the it happens uh, assessment. Also. See, it's already happening. He's giving a live example of it happening in one of the institutions. That's what I said. Somewhere somebody is thinking like this and they are trying out some crazy stuff. And it's, it may look crazy, but tomorrow it can become the norm. Who knows? We don't know, right? So that's what I'm saying. So that is the third uh, technique. Thanks for bringing up that example, sir. That really helps. Uh, <clears throat> the next technique is called adapt. Adapt is basically today probably one of the other reasons why students hate exams is you give them papers and you need to make them write like you know, long answers, etc. And look at the look at the plight of somebody like me. Every time I get an uh, extra paper, I need to write my name Chandra Mohan Gopal. I used to just pass in all the exams because I hated writing my name so many times in every extra paper, right? So that's why. So why make them do all this? Why can't we just make it as a simple multiple choice question through a digital medium? And why can't we test the uh, uh, you know, uh, level of understanding using that? Even for that matter, the SAP certification, what Philip highlighted today morning, it is actually a multiple choice questions based exam for three hours where 80 questions will be thrown at the student. Then those, uh, and the passing percentage is anywhere between 60 to 72 depending on, depending on the topic. So if a global certification from a company which is worth 30 billion euros can happen through a multiple choice questions based assessment, why not a college thing? Right? So that's, I mean, again, Good for thought. Probably then we will come to the point that okay, my continuous progressive assessments I will do it as LCQ. Only my final assessment I will give it as a detailed exam. So we may come with the via media. So this is the way a seemingly impossible idea will keep getting refined and become a feasible idea, right? So that is the next thing which is yeah, adapt, so. across the country. Yeah, oh, we, we did that. Were on the exactly. Exactly. So and COVID taught us a lot of things. And earlier to that also, it is already established that, by the business that. schools. Correct. For that matter, actually, I can tell you how SAP exams happen. Earlier, at least, till about five, seven years back, we need to go to a center, uh, Prometric kind of a center, and uh, be in person and uh, take the online exam. And there will be a physical proctor who will be, you know, doing the proctoring to see whether somebody is taking the anti or is copying, etc. But now, for the last four or five years, we have done away with that also. 24 by 7, anytime you can take an exam. From at, the, at whichever place you are, you are in a house or you are in an office or you are in a hotel, whatever it is, you can take the exam. All that you need to do is to block the uh, thing two hours before. At that time, log in. The question paper will come up and your ATS screen will get blocked. You cannot do control, or tell, log tab, nothing will work. So only the exam screen will be there. And uh, in parallel, there will be a Zoom session that will open. And you need to just have a laptop or a water computer with camera so that there's a, there's a person remotely who will proctor it. That's the extent to which it has gone, right? And believe me, it is successful. Even I have taken an exam at 3 a.m. I'm a morning person, so I always, my brain is at its best in the morning. So I took an exam at 3 a.m. staying in my house. And uh, so technology actually enables this kind of thing. So can we actually start thinking differently? That's the whole idea. So that's about adapting. It is online on demand exam. Online on demand exam, sir. Anytime, anywhere. Anytime. You set it right, sir. You set it right. And uh, sorry, I made a mistake. That's actually transform. Adapt is basically can we learn from some other industry how they do it and then adapt it to our this one. I, small change, whatever I explained is for transform. Transform is change the way in which you do it. So that's what is transform. Adapt is basically okay. Say for example, <coughs> okay, till the till somebody is a student, you do exams for them, to test their knowledge. But once they finish their work and join a corporate and do jobs like us, are we writing exams every year? No, right? So what are we doing? Put, put through? We are put through something called a performance appraisal based on how well we have done our job. Similarly, can we give them some projects and see how well they fare in the project and that can that become the basis? Can we just you know not have exams only? So that could be a thing of adapting. Adapting the practices from some other industry for a similar objective 
and try to inculcate in our scheme of things. So that is attack. Transform is something I just told you about uh, the online exam. Uh, the other thing could be again something like exaggerate, eliminate. Can we actually totally eliminate exams? Can we totally eliminate exams? By the end of the day, uh, whatever I do as exams, etc., in the university or institute, whichever it is, the student may score very high also. <coughs> but finally, by the end of the day, there is a corporate who is coming and consuming this student as a uh, employee, mm -hmm. and they are anyway doing their own assessments and the interview and all that. So why should I go through all this rigmarole? Let the money decide if the day is good enough. That idea was given by Narendra Modi when you were <laughs> See, to, the, to the group of vice chancellor, I was vice chancellor, Jeep Pujar Technology. Great, sir. Thanks for sharing. You said that now you certify that you are Mahasha, Tamari Mahasha, Machar was Padaraji, and you have a certificate of Pariksha to Jena Jaru Jela. See, whatever we think is crazy is already getting discussed somewhere. So that's what I said. That's about eliminating. The other is something like substituting. Can we actually substitute uh, object or place or procedure? Something very similar to transform. Like instead of making somebody come to an exam hall and write an exam. Because many times what happens is the moment the, the fact that you have to keep your books outside, go inside, wait for the bill, bill to ring and uh, some, somebody will be getting more uh, extra papers. This will, oh, that case writing very well. So I am not writing all these tensions. I will sit at my home and write my exam. So I am not having any other distraction. I will be more, my stress levels will be less. I'll, do the exam. So that could be one. Thing. So that could be about substitution. So this is the creates methodology. How many of you have heard about this methodology earlier? Creates this technique? No. Okay. So it's a, it's a learning for all of you. Maybe as an exception, some of you want to take a photograph, quickly click it and then I will move on to the next one. The step is the next step is very clear. I'm going to give you we request if you can share this. We'll share it. We'll share it also not a problem. Yeah. For the writing, if you want any any quick for a quick reference, if you want, you can take it as a take a pic. Now the next uh, thing, next uh, section of design thinking is now we are done with the problem. So now we have three specific problems to solve. All of you know your three specific problems. The next about uh, uh, nine minutes we are going to, I, 10 minutes or 12, uh, take it as 12 minutes. 12 minutes we are going to ideate all these problems. So the way it will run is, we will break it into three lots of uh, four minutes each. In each four minutes, we will take one problem. We have three problems, so we will take the first problem in the first four minutes, second problem in the second four minutes, and third problem in the third four minutes. Are you all with me? Yeah. yeah. And in that time slot, say first to four minutes, you will take the first problem, you will be given one minute, and you need to do silent brainstorming and come up with as many solutions as possible, how to address that problem. For an example, can you tell me what is your first problem statement? For an example, just for a Providing support of technological tools to the students. Okay, providing uh, support of technology tools to the student. Okay, so uh, the specific uh, specific uh, uh, solutions can be every student may not have the monetary wherewithal to buy the this one. So we will do something like a cloud based. Nowadays there are there are cloud based computer computing itself available. Cloud based computer, computing itself is available. Like the infrastructure as a service or platform as a service or application as a service all those are available. So can we make it available through that to, to students? So that could be one of the solutions. So like that, you need to come up with as many solutions as possible independently, no discussion. First to one minute, no discussions, only independent brainstorming. And the next three minutes, what I want you to do is, please, uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, just uh, focus your attention here because this is the most important step. If you don't follow the instruction now, this uh, step can go for very long. This is the wrong time, they have brought all the snacks, etc. <laughs> Wrong timing anyway. Instead, instead uh, of food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, uh, just, just be with me for the next few minutes, please. Uh, just listen to this very carefully because we need to really optimize our efforts in this step in the interest of time. So, first one minute you will come independently come up with as many ideas as possible, right? Then what you will do is for the next three minutes you will all get to the vote. The first person, whoever it is, if you can decide, will start posting their ideas. They will talk it out and post their ideas so that they know what the idea is, right? And when the second person comes, assume that you have done your ideas, when you come, as you are listening itself, if one of your ideas is the same as him, throw the paper off. Because otherwise what happens is the tendency is, yeah, you also have the same thought. That 20 seconds is a waste. Just as you are listening to the first person, if some of those ideas are in your list, throw that off. So that the next person will only talk them net new ideas. Same happens to the third person. He will check out all the things what the other two people have spoken. They will, he will only come up with the 
net new ideas. Like that, you will have to do the next three minutes, you need to come up with all the ideas. Net new. So it is a unique. Unique. Is all unique ideas are solutions for that problem. Right? And we will repeat it for the second problem also, third problem also. Right? Can we get started with the first problem now? Yeah. Can we get the timer started for... Hey, one minute, you already started now. No. Oh, you no, already started. <laughs> yeah, get going, get going with your ideation. As many ideas, you know your first problem, right? All of you know your first problem. So, no discussion now. Come up with as many independent ideas as possible. No, right now, no discussion. Come up with as many ideas as possible. Then we will do a discussion in the next three minutes. I have a specific reason for that. More ideas. Then only more ideas is coming. That's why. for independent brainstorming. So problem one. Pro for problem one, yeah, yeah. We are in the first problem, first four minutes, and then one minute is ready. Time off, pens down. Now, what I request is, if all of you can come to the uh, your respective workspace, if you can walk up to the workspace, if you don't mind. All of you can get your workspace and stand around this table for you there. Can you give us one more minute? We will not even bigger. Okay, fine. We'll extend it by one more minute. But uh, there's a reason to make it fast because whatever comes top of mind, that's what we want to do. There's a reason to keep it all very short and easy. Fast. One more minute. Yeah, one more minute has already started, but no more extension. Last one minute. Team done, yeah. team you can start if your uh, your team is done. You can start. My only thing is, oh, okay, you're not done it in your post it, sir. Okay. Achha, uh, I thought we have to. Uh, no, it's better now because then we can. That oh, is. Okay. Actually, I will give the instruction for the next one. Uh, not an issue. Not an issue. Don't. Yeah, just rewrite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't do anything extra.
and uh, 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 viable, viable. Feas uh, desirable, feasible and viable. Use that as a uh, thumb rule and check which are the top three solutions you would shortlist from your set of ideas for each of the problems. Totally six minutes, whichever way you want to do it, you can do it. For all the three problems together, six minutes, six minutes starting now. Discuss, quickly discuss. And write one pro one, sol one solution in one shape. One solution in one shape. One solution in one shape. Ah, each, uh, each problem should have three shapes. For each problem should have three shapes. If there is any problem in getting into an agreement, the easiest way is to voting. Do voting. Anyway, we are going for elections very soon. So. Do a do a warm up for that. <laughs> no, many times we do that. We many people vote and they are okay. Ladies and gentlemen, two thirds of the time gone, only two minutes left. Only two minutes left. Somebody else would have also thought the same thing what you thought, so it would be a corroboration of what you thought. So. 
And then we will get on to the final uh, six minutes of result taking, which is presentations. Your team is done, right? Your team is also done. I think team one is still doing. Team one, are you done? Sir, done, sir? No, no. Once you are done, let me know. Yeah. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we are now going to do is we are going to go through each speaker, captain, just for a refresher. Tell what's your main statement. First problem statement, sub problem, and three solutions. Second, let's have a let's create some memories. Thank you. So he wants to take one more. Okay. So your attention on the back benches. Back benches are going to start first. Uh -huh. for <laughs> and uh, keep the two minute timer ready. Are you ready to start? Yes. Are you the yes. people that are ready to listen? Yes. yes. Right now, don't focus on your board, focus on them. Two minutes are started, sir. Please. And you know, uh, faculty members and the management and the government and the local government and local society, local community, and many people. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are we under two minutes? Two minutes, two minutes and five seconds. Five seconds extra. That's Sorry. okay. That's still okay. We did not caution. You'll be bought panel. <laughs> no, no, we didn't want to break your flow. So two minutes. Thank That's you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. You know, hold on, hold on. Any, any comments or uh, observations? On yeah, we are ready to answer your questions, please. Anything you want to add? One thing I was starting to see, sir. There should be a law that we all from industry should do CSR teaching as a mandatory thing. Like how in Singapore you have to do military service compulsory. So I was listening to you. I was, I was all ears for you. Huh? <laughs> Back and then see my video. Then the I jokes apart now. There are yeah, very yeah. lot of valid points. So any any questions, comments, any additions you want to make? Otherwise, we'll move on to the pause. The reason for you know, sir, uh, just a minute. The, the reason for writing that from my perspective, it was my solution because you know today there is a uh, uh, more than 70 percent of the population in India who is getting an education in higher education sector are not you know getting any such kind of a technical facility. Exactly. exactly. Get your points. Your, no, your point is valid. I was just. Putting it in a lighter way. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Give them a round of applause. Now let's move on to team two. Team two, who would like to present? Man, please. Yeah, yeah. Get going. Now the rest of the teams, please focus your attention here. Before that, please have, have a group photograph of yourself. Please have a group photograph before you start. Sir, we expect that. First, uh, have a photograph of yourself. I'll join you the next. Uh, lot. No, I'll, do, I'll join. First, you have a photograph of you. Uh, okay. If they want the board to be. Uh, when they take the photograph. I'll join, sir. I'll join. First, you five take a photograph. I'll, next uh, lot, I'll join. No, don't Then, sir, shall I? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now uh, teams one and three, if you can probably focus your attention all to team two and listen to their narration, that will be real helpful. Team two, get going. Mic, 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 mic. Mic is there, mic is there. Please talk. Okay. I'm Dr. Neelkumar Patel, Dean Arts and Science and Gandhinagar University. Uh, our team name is Crazy Gang. Tagline is Sarva Vya. Our team leader is Kamlesh Adhya and our uh, the problem statement is how might we continually align academia to dynamic workplace? Dynamic industry reference. Yeah. Yeah. Work. Okay. So uh, the three problems uh, we have defined is first one is on-job training. Uh -huh. For that I give the solutions for three uh, solutions. So on-job training uh, is our uh, main uh, problem. So first is that identify the industry, communication and uh, would some you want to help her? Uh, yeah. Probably the handwriting is a little. You read. But that one correct. Communication and travel facility. Okay, fine. So basically making them. Uh, 
uh, enabled to visit uh, places Next. and do. Uh, half time student in college, right. half time in the industry. Great. 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 Get your point. Yeah. Next. Fix their enumeration. Fantastic. <coughs> and name the students. More focus to study related and industry related. Great. Education. Next. The second one is uh, that uh, that I'm much needed to inculcate that in the, our uh, all the institutes like 20 hours workload. That should be there in American Canada. Students are allowed to work 20 hours, no? So here also in India, also it will start that. So definitely, students go in the industry. They they see all the things, the environment and everything, they and the requirement of the industry. So again, they are wasting so much time in the institute. Sometimes instead of there, even on Saturday also they work there. So they come to know that how the uh, environment of the work is there. Fantastic. So definitely, they will try. To cultivate that all abilities, okay, this is needed. Suppose communication is needed, team spirit is needed, leadership quality is needed. Get your point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How to work sincerely is needed. Yes. All the things they come to know only. They become ready for the industry. industry. And right. second thing is that they get uh, some uh, money regarding uh, remuneration, remuneration, remuneration yes. for okay. that. So that also will be much helpful. Those students Correct. who have some financial problems, they. Uh, yeah. Now let's yeah, uh, earning, earning well. well. Yeah. Yeah. And internship should be in last whole year. Right? Our second problem is uh, industry will give training what they need. Correct. The solution is BOS members from industry paper should be there. Right. Then design the training models. Right. Develop models uh, and uh -huh. syllabus. Right. Then second is industrial visit should be there right. to train the students. Right. Third one is faculty industry people exchange program should be there. Fantastic. Right? Third one is industry may propose. I the teachers. Uh, teachers the and teachers, yeah. So, institute and industry linkage. Right. As per? As per the uh, course curriculum. Technology. Yeah. Technology yeah. window. Right. And <coughs> accreditation as per the design. Right. Then extra uh, fees. <laughs> extra okay. extra uh, fees, uh, financial uh, Constra related constraint uh, be needs to be addressed. Address. Okay. And lastly, the MOUs, and MOUs, industry, and industry, industry, and Thank you, Thank you. Any quick uh, feedback suggestions for team two? If not, we will move on to team three. Any quick suggestions? Oh, no. Are we good? Uh, they have taken more than two minutes. Yes. How much time? Three. One wow. minute extra. That's okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Right. Now uh, the third team. Would you like to get started? Wait. Okay. Done. Not at me, join the. Yeah, yeah, please. You can sit on. No, no, no. You are the leader. No, no, nothing. I am just a facilitator. You, you people did the how heavy lifting. Is <laughs> again also I am creating some. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, look here. Yeah, 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 sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now teams uh, one and two, please put all your focus on team three. Listen to their narration and then let's get going. Team three, you can get started. Your two minutes is starting. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah, two minutes. Good now. evening. Good evening. Good evening. We are crazy squads. Our tagline <laughs> is we are creative learners. Our question was how might we swiftly embrace and institutionalize uh, new education policy? Our main problem was multiple stakeholders and enabling change as per uh, emerging needs. Our first problem is making ultimate user stakeholders partners. Uh, how do we make them partners? So you mean are, students? Uh, our stakeholders here, we are looking at three main stakeholders, students, parents, industry. Fantastic. So we want to make our stakeholders shareholders. Uh, they will also be part of our various councils. Uh, we want industry to collaborate with us. We want to do credit mapping with uh, other universities. So other universities will become stakeholders with us. And uh, we want to create a different culture for the stakeholders. One is creating openness uh, and uh, so that there is dispute handling is much easier and technology is to be used. Learn at your own pace, at your own place. Mm -hmm. The second area we have looked at for new uh, uh, NEP is there are emerging areas of technology, commerce and production processes. They are going to change. So we are looking at one of the thing is we have the whole institute has to be absolutely geared to industry 
zero and we have to be very uh, uh, immersed with IoT technologies and AI. Uh, we are looking at train the trainers with the latest technologies, particularly AI, compulsory for faculty to go for industry internship and industry engagement and compulsory to be engaged in research work. Uh, we want uh, faculty to be also understand policy issues and governance issues and SDGs so that they are planet focused. Uh, we want to uh, and uh, then there are uh, operational details which we will move to. And the Sorry. third area is future because we are working towards future scenarios. So we must map redundancy of current jobs and profile of jobs in 2030 to 2050. The future jobbers will have to be tech savvy and context immersed. Uh, they need to partner with industry for future requir requirements and government tenure policy to be known. Uh, most important is uh, employment based curriculum but futuristic employment based curriculum and most important everybody should be happy. So happiness quotient should be very high. There should be community engagement, not solitary engagement in teams of two. And that we should be planet focused. And students to be most important. Failure is part of life. So if you fail, it's if you have a redo, it's like That's another it. step forward. And uh, so the any challenge that comes should be looked at with happiness. Uh, and that is what the curriculum should aim at. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, for, for Baran? Um, yeah, Three minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, fine. No issues, but uh, good attempt. Thank you very much. And any quick uh, comments, uh, feedback for whatever put they put forth? Nothing? Okay. Now, let's uh, get to the closure. See, I'm not sure how many of you attended the session by Philip in the morning. Okay, some of you attended, but some of you probably didn't. Now, look Samuel at... Samuel Samuel. Ah, Philip Samuel. 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 Correct, correct. Uh, I will now relate back what you have identified as challenges and solutions to whatever he said. If I look at the uh, this, this team, you are talking about upgrading skills for the 21st century and then uh, industry meeting, industry professionals coming and teaching, etc. That's precisely what he has told. First, we are getting you the SAP global curriculum for a particular solution of SAP that is getting taught to your students. That is point number one. So, which means it is industry specific content. That is point number one. Yes, presented for both the MBA and engineering. Engineering. And we can do it for commerce, we can do it for science, for every stream of except for arts, every stream we have that uh, possibility. And the second thing is, he also said that delivery will be done by certified practicing professionals from our approved partners. So that way, industry people are actually going to come and teach you. So this is the link back to what he said and what you yourself found us uh, need. Then you said uh, providing tech tools and uh, uh, exposure to MLA, etc, etc. SAP as a ERP application. See, please understand one thing. Never get excited by technology only uh, because technology is more like an icing in the cake. As somebody in the morning said, the, the spokesperson from uh, the LinkedIn said, artificial intelligence is not going to replace jobs, it is going to make our jobs more efficient. It's a tool, that's all, it's a tool, it's not a replacement for humans. So, technology can only bring in incremental efficiencies. It will never replace humans, right? That's the main thing you all need to understand. So don't get excited by technology. Teaching somebody MI, AL and uh, NLP and all that doesn't help because he or she may be uh, king or queen in that topic. But as an industry person, when I come for an interview, the question I will ask is, now tell me how will you apply it in a business context? Like for example, in uh, uh, something like uh, 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 if, uh, if a job opening comes up in something like a Wipro or a HCL, for one opening, there will be some lacks of uh, applications that come. And if some days manually shift and sort, it's going to be very difficult. So That's yeah. where I will use AI. I will give some key cues. If the profile has this qualification, this many years of experience, this kind of percentage for uh, scores, etc., select. So what otherwise would take days will take months, seconds or uh, uh, minutes, right? So that is the business orientation of the application of the technology that is very important. That is what will get 
your students get when they tie up with a company like SAP, when you tie up with a company like SAP, because we are a we are not a technology product, we are a business management application product. SAP is a business management application. You showed those labels, whatever. I don't know how many of you saw it. Shell, for nearly 400 billion US dollars. They run their entire 400 billion worth business on SAP. 400 billion means 100 crore is a billion, which is like 40,000 crore dollars. A dollar is 80 rupees. 40,000 into 8, 32 lakh crore dollars, uh, sorry, lakh crores worth business is getting managed in SAP. So we are not teaching some Namke Vasti application which is like a small time accounting software or some. It is a global scale enterprise resource planning application which the students are getting and it is a global standard curriculum and a global standard certification which means anywhere in the world if their person goes with that certification they will be recognized for job. So that is the reason we openly com commit that to people will get global careers. So that is the second thing. So that is uh, point number two. Now coming to the other uh, one you talked about uh, case studies and uh, exposure to application and technical tools in the real life system. So our content we are not just giving theory, we are also giving practice service. Because SAP is like learning to swim, you cannot just learn theory and think, say that I am a swimmer. So our, our offering to you will be theory, server for practice, which is lab in your parallel. So theory, lab, trainer from our side who is the lecturer and then also the certification. That is so it is a complete package. After that, when they get certified, we also put them through our placement board. So we are not one of those OEMs who comes and just throws an LMS at you and say, you now somehow manage on your own, get certified. If you get certified, happy for you, otherwise leave it. No. We take the take care of the entire ecosystem, entire ecosystem. That's something. So I'm just linking back whatever you are saying to what he said. So, so you understand how we are aligned to your own expectations. Coming here, you talked about uh, okay, uh, you are saying on the job training. I don't know how many of you have noticed, he said that integrated curriculum, the entire last year for engineering and the last semester for MBA is internship, industry internship. That's the agreement we have had from our hiring partners like Deloitte or EY or Uber, it is TCS or all these people, right? So that is again taken care. So which means we have actually taken care of every aspect what you are saying and we have carefully crafted the solution so that it actually meets every one of your requirement. But I will also be candid today. I have one thing to take back. For the me and Philip, we have one thing to take back, which probably we have not thought through fully, which is the point that two teams said about industry, uh, sorry, faculty and industry exchange Excellent. program. That is something we probably have not thought through. We will come up, we will discuss internally and see, come up with a model on how to enable that also. Hold on for that. But it's a good learning. So that's the reason I said uh, what he said in the beginning. We have learned and crafted all this based on many such. Uh, sessions and today even after so many years, it is now 7th year we are running this, even after so many years today we have found one thing new for us. So we have we have some homework. So thanks for giving us homework, right? So that is point number two. Design then you out. talked about board of studies, industry should be there in board of studies, industry curriculum should be there. Personally, uh, uh, he will vouch, I am part of the board of studies for the SAP Cloud ERP specialization of BTEC programs in Parul University. Uh, DAV University, MIT, ADT University, so many universities. I am personally, like me, there are several of my colleagues also who are experts in SAP who are part of Board of Studies. So we are again, he talked about differentiators, governance structure, we will be part of Board of Studies. Yeah. For that matter, our delivery partners will even help you in uh, marketing and communicating to the students. Because believe me, wherever we go for such partnerships, the first year is a very tough year because students don't know what SAP is. Forget students, even most professors don't know what SAP is. So the first year takes a lot of convincing, but once the first batch gets placed, it's it's like cake pop. I mean, people just keep pouring. Miller say no, it's houseful, game over, <laughs> right? So that's the way. It is. So that this this is what I wanted to take from uh, this team. And one thing you specially highlighted is also about monetary issues. We have gone to uh, tier two towns in uh, some Tamil Nadu and Andhra and Telangana and all, where there are genuinely students with uh, uh, fee, uh, fee uh, this one. Why we have subsidized our rates heavily for the students' uh, community. I don't know how many of you know it. Uh, how many? Of, how, how much would you typically charge for an engineering course in any of your college or university? Depends. It is no, roughly, sir, roughly, roughly. One lakh plus. One lakh per year. Average college. One lakh per one lakh per year. So four lakhs, right? That's for four years, which is 800 days of learning, assuming 200 days per year, right? Mm -hmm. And SAP course under certification is just 20 days. In the external market, if somebody can dedicate eight hours a day for 20 days, they will finish the course and they can appear for certification. Can any of you take a guess how much do people in the outside market pay for this certification? There are 
close to uh, for 40,000 people who get certified every year. So, you know, in India, how, many, how much do people pay for this course and certification in the external market? You can go and check it for yourself. Training.sap.com, I'm giving you open this one. You can go and check it for yourself. It's close to 3.02 lakhs plus 18% GST. 20 days. 20 days course. So, it's almost close to what you get for an engineering course in an institute. But you may then think, who, who are these fools who are doing this? They are not fools because they know the value of it. The return on investment is very high. The minimum, the bare minimum starting salary is 4 lakhs. So even in the very first year, they will get their payback. The highest salary I have seen is 12 lakhs. Our 10 cent has touched even 20. Very occasional case. I don't want to take it to the extreme cases, but 12 is very much feasible. So within three months, they will get the money back. That's the reason people take it. And more than anything, it's not the starting salary. It's the thing of the global thing. The partners we have, Noble Q, their promoter started as a uh, SAP sales and distribution consultant. His life in 92. In 99, he floated this company. Today, this company has 2,000 employees and they have located how many locations across the globe? 14, 14, countries. 14 countries across the globe they are located. So, you can imagine the kind of catapulting it can do. People are driven. So, that is about uh, this team's uh, points. Coming to this thing, you can again see here. Uh, I like that statement of making uh, stakeholders as shareholders. Yeah. Uh, I'll use it somewhere. Thanks, madam. And uh, the same point, they also brought out that uh, you know, industry should be part of the board of studies and council members and all that. And they also brought out a very important point that we should be forward looking. We should look at how, what are the job demands of the future and accordingly come up with the curriculum. There are some of our uh, institutes where we have partnered. They have even made this design thinking as part of the curriculum for students. The simple reason is, I'll give you an example. What technology today is enabling? Uh, there is a company by name Kaiser Compressors in Germany. They are in the business of manufacturing compressors. You know compressor is a capex item, capital expenditure item. You go to a factory, you need to go through a long purchase process and if you win, you get it. Otherwise, your competition wins, the entire effort goes as a waste. But with IoT coupled with SAP as ERP, IoT technology coupled with SAP ERP, somebody thought of a very different solution. They said, uh, dear customer, you don't have to buy my uh, this one, whatever compressor. Give me space in your factory, I will put up the compressor. Like you pay for your electricity and the bag. Now what is happening? So don't get fascinated by technology alone. Always go with something like SAP. I'm not saying SAP is the only thing. Go with something like SAP which will have a business relevance of the topic what you are teaching. That is what will stand your students in good state for long. Otherwise, again, their shelf life will go off. So, right? so that is the point I am saying. So our courses are always futuristic for the simple reason that the how many IT companies you can think of in the world who have survived for 50 years and still growing? Tell me. 50 years and still growing. How many companies can you think of? Microsoft, IBM, maybe Dell, Cisco. Don't tell Google and all. They are all millennial peaks. No, no, no. We brought all 80s, 90s. 50 years. 50 years and still growing. SAP is one among them. But the reason is we have always reinvented ourselves and become relevant to the current times. And we will always continue to do that. And we our solution will never go out of fashion because I don't know if you watched that uh, one of the stretches is has put 89% of world commerce touches an SAP system. If SAP system fails, you know what happens. You may not be able to fill petrol in a Reliance petrol pump, you may not be able to make a geo call, you may not be able to buy a Marathi vehicle. That's what it is. So it will never happen. So you are we are actually giving you one of the premium global best course. That's that's the point. So it is actually future proof. So these are the points I wanted to bring to your notice. Uh, that all that that you wish is getting addressed except for that one point faculty exchange we will come back with the solution for that very soon but otherwise thank you very much for being a great audience you are a very lovely audience you are, if i were to put it in a lighter bit you are very obedient students <laughs> you are very obedient students really helped me run the show very well in time it would not have been possible without your cooperation thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much and I think we have a, we want to do a quick uh, group photograph of all of us together and there's also some small memento that will be given just few more minutes if you don't mind. All of us we go up there waiting for us, don't worry. So the point is that uh, the summary is, you know, we have something from industry, you have something to do for your students. You know, it's, it's getting together is the beginning, okay. The next thing what we are requesting, we have your feedback form. No obligation, but you know, every university, every government college has its own dynamics. Right. But if you have an intention that your student should go into a next good job and have my ma'am said social life being changed, right? If that is something which is there in your mind, 
uh, we will be are willing to come to your institution to have a discussion with your stakeholder to explore how we can run some industry program with no, okay, okay. paid internships, everything, what we talked about. And we need some feedback from you. And uh, definitely, you know, there is no hard and first all, some of you mentioned about financial constraints and all. Now, coming together is the beginning, and then uh, how we can make it happen is a different thing. Actually, one of the institutes we organize for bank loans for students. Yeah, there are so many ways. We'll and management it. put in some. Correct. There, there, suddenly, you know, there's so many ways and models which we can work it out. So just leave us the feedback, and we'll meet in the top because they are waiting for the final presentation. And uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir, you have you can take on. Thank you so much. After that, we, after she finishes, we can have the group for that. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, we both are from SAP. They are from Noble Q. Thank fine. you. When was this? Sir? I just put this inside. Yeah. yeah. Through a year. Okay. When was this? Um, I have been doing this since a very long time, producing sessions, and I have never seen such fun session. Uh, Chandu Mali sir, amazing. Thank you. It was beautiful. It was amazing. Team SAP. Amazing presentation, amazing, and of course our educators, our esteemed educators, who has been so nice, and they were so uh, amazing, absolutely amazing. I'm just out of words. Uh, because of this, uh, we at Anago Media want to felicitate you for the amount of work and contribution you're doing towards education. This I just saw how wonderful it was, the thoughts you have and everything. So. Uh, I would request uh, General Molly sir to please felicitate all the speakers. Thank you. Dr. Bhargav P. Majdala. Excuse me, sir. 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 Okay, sir. Yes. Wait, I say. Wait. Yes, yes please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Shri Pavan Kumar Soni. No, this is Dr. Awesome. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Shri Pavan Kumar Soni. Dr. Nirupa Bapu Yes, please. One more. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Dr. Hitesh Bhatia. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Great work. Yes, please. Thank you. Dr. DJ Shah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, like, oh, 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 Professor Sangeeta Shaw. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Yes, please. Sir, so you can probably come to the center, sir. Yes. Look to the center. No, no, here, here, here. This way. This way. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful participation. Thank you. Dr. Ahmed Patel. Yes, please. Oh, yes. yes, please. One more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, it's only four pictures. Oh, so, uh, no, no, no. Thank you. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. no it's okay. Don't, don't, don't get one. Yeah, that's all. We'll wait. Yeah, yeah.
Yes, Miss Dr. Gangarji Yogwa. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for being here. It is a very, very more regularly, I would say. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Professor Dr. Indu Rao, Dean. Yes, please. Dr. D. V. Patel. Really happy that it was useful. Thank you very much. Hello, Nari. Tomar party too. Mahendra. Nothing like this. We are all in it together. A table level. Height come है वो आगे आ जाइए. Yes sir. Sir, आइए. हाँ पाँच चले ले table. तमर वाले लोग हैं ना. हाँ तो. Yes, please. Hello. One more. Sir, I have a question. Wait, wait. Yes, one more. One more. Yes. As long as you must say. Wait, one more. One, two, three, say. Yes, one, two, three, say. Everyone shout. One, two, three, shout. Thank you. Our creativity. Our creativity.